Welcome back, everybody, to Marconomics 101 spell, um, presents Hoot Loot, the place where you come to be informed, be amused, but never be misled. It is the 13th of November, and today's episode is going to be called, um, What Are We Fighting For? We are fighting the wrong enemy. You and I and all the decent people in this country that built it up, that started businesses, that worked for companies, that worked our butts off. Who are we fighting? We are fighting a, polit a political group, Republicans and Democrats, who, are, who n want nothing more than to put us under their thumb and milk us like cows. And that is what we're fighting. The media will tell you everything different because they are with them and they want to control the, the, the narrative too. But I'm going to tell you the truth and you're going to see with dots and you're going to observe how the truth is the truth and how they fool you. So with that, I would like to ask you to please like and subscribe and we'll be back in a minute with the charts. And what I want you to do is watch some of the older episodes because they're going to give you a lot of the information. I can't tell you all that I know, but I know stuff that I have researched thoroughly that is going to shock the hell out of you and you are going to be so mad, you're going to want to throw those bums out of office. And I, all I can tell you is, vote out the incumbents. Never have an incumbent in office again. Fire them. They would fire you if you did that crappy of a job. And I want you to fire them. I want you to fire every politician you possibly can. And start with a new one. If they're so good at what they do, they can go get a job. But they can't, because they can't do crap. And all they can do is suck up your money, steal your money, tax your money, spend your money, waste your money, and make this country a third-rate banana republic. And I'm not going to let it happen. And please don't let it happen. Vote out the incumbents. We're, at, we're after you guys. And if you want to come after me, come after me. I'm not afraid of you. So we're going to go to the charts and we're going to show you just what damage they've done to this country. Welcome back, everybody, and I'm going to show you some charts that are going to blow your minds. The first one, well, it shouldn't blow your mind because you should know this already. The least group of people are politicians, minus 54%, minus 52%. Can you believe that? And they get reelected time after time after time after time. Now, if people didn't like them that much, you know they must be cheating, they must be lying, they must be stealing, they must be getting all kinds of bribes and, and all kinds of stuff from people to be able to win a big, to be uh, able to win a re-election because it is not cheap. One thing that Harry Truman said, and I will never forget this, if you come if you become rich being a politician, you are a crook. Do you hear me, Nancy Pelosi, with crap in your streets? Everybody defecates in the city of San Francisco, and you keep getting reelected, and you're worth $175 million. How did that happen? Huh? How did that happen? I want you to explain that to somebody, and I'd like the media to tell me how that happened. Okay, so now we're going to go to the charts, and I want, you to, I want to show you some of the top uh, people that are um, going to give you uh, that you respect. One of them is doctors. Now, doctors, um, I do respect a lot, but the 52%, the 54% they had in there included doctor, um, included, um, did not include Dr. Fauci. They took him out. If they had put in Dr. Fauci, he would have been at minus 100% for doctors because he is the worst heinous human being other than Mark Zuckerberg. And we're going to show you exactly what that piece of you know what is done. All right, let's go on to the charts. Tesla is, I call it a canary in the coal mine. The reason I call it that is because the dumb money, the new money, the money that people just have, it's just hope money. You know, it's the kind of money that you throw in a slot machine and you hope you win a million dollars. That's what they, that, these are the people that buy that. These are the people that buy lottery tickets and these are the people that lose their money. Lottery tickets 
are a regressive tax. You will never, ever win with lottery tickets. Sure, you may get a winning ticket, but you will. they take 50% out right off the top. So how can you possibly win with a lottery ticket? You're better off with a slot machine in Vegas because at least you'll get 98% of your dollars back. You put in a dollar, and if you play an hour, you'll get 96, 97 cents back, and you'll have a nice time but you won't, not with California. California can break the rules because they are our dictators. They are our rulers. We need to fire them, and I mean it. And all I want to ask of you people, please, I'm begging you, vote out all incumbents. And the reason, even if it's the same party, I just want to, people to know that we have power as voters and that we can send them packing, and they, once, once that happens, we are gonna. We should need to amend the Constitution to never have um, more than one term again. People need to produce in to produce goods for this goods for this country. They cannot produce goods sitting around a desk shuffling papers, and that's all they do. Okay, and I'm telling you, that is not going to help us at all. Printing paper, making no goods, having bottlenecks, 60,000 ships off of Los Angeles. Who the hell thinks that's an economy that the United States could ever tolerate? I can't. The Founding Fathers would probably die a second time if they knew that we were doing something stupid like that. This is Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin, I have, to I have told you before, is a fraud. I would like you to watch the episode, Bitcoin Bites Back. There's a number of Bitcoin uh, episodes, and they will tell you the true nature of Bitcoin. It does not exist. Bitcoin is a password, and that's it. Okay? You do not own anything with Bitcoin, and one of, one of these days, one of these days, you are going to have nothing. The people that have made money off of Bitcoin, they bought it early, they held it early, but no one's made that much money off of Bitcoin because Bitcoin goes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. They've had six, they've had six bubbles already and they may have a seventh. Bitcoin actually looks pretty good and it, um, it looks pretty good. But you know what? If you lose your password, you're, you're SOL and the U.S. government is going to take your money from you because they built it. How is it possible that Bitcoin could become such a big industry when no one runs it, no one present, no one's the president, no officers, no intellectual property, no operations, no nothing? It is unbelievable. And the Treasury doesn't object. The banking system doesn't object. The uh, Federal Reserve doesn't object. They could care less. And they're a threat to the banking system. And you and I well know it. And... That's the whole point. This is just a way of making us all impoverished and uh, milking us like milk cows. But it has made a double top, and um, or it's very close to making a double top. It has made one, and it will go up. People, the amount of stupidity of people who buy these things is absolutely unlimited. There's a sucker born any minute. Every minute, as W.C. Fields would say, and I would say that there are three suckers born every minute. The Dow Jones Industrials, I have in the past said that when we had a sideways pattern like this, that the, the longer the pattern and the tighter the pattern, the bigger the breakout. And I have been negative on the Dow and stocks, and I still am, because they do not warrant their value but it is going to go up. And if you want to take a chance, you can take a short trade. There might be some good stocks to buy. I don't know. But the point is, when you have a big consolidation pattern like that, it either breaks down in a hurry or up in a hurry. And sometimes it fakes you out. So we're going to see what's going to happen. The Dow and the S&P have gone up something like eight weeks in a row. That is ridiculous. 13 years in a row. That's ridiculous. That is statistically impossible without the Fed or someone else pushing the market up. Run the numbers. If you're a statistic, statistician, you'll know it's about one in a trillion. The NASDAQ 100 is all the tech stocks that the, that the U.S. government 
loves to help and loves to put their competition out of business. These are the, I call them the fraud squad. Five trillion companies of market cap, Tesla being the last one. And look at that. I, sh I showed you Tesla in the beginning, but they went up $200 billion in a day and about $200 billion in a day. Now, what if you bought at, at that 200 billion a day, you would have lost everything the next day. Would you be happy with yourself? Would you feel proud? Would you brag to your friends? Oh, I own Tesla. I'm cool. I'm hip. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't tell anybody. You'd hide that. All right. So we're going to go on the next chart. The S&P 500 looks really good. And this one is not quite as going up as fast, but it still looks good. All of the charts have had long consolidation patterns, and those are the kind of patterns that build up energy and strength, and they build up some kind of energy that is going to propel them higher. I don't know how high this goes. I can't give you a single clue of how high it's going to go because it's already not sensical. All right? So we're going to go to the next chart. Well, we're about to go to the next charts, um, but I see my fan mail is here. Your fan I, mail is here, sir. Yeah, and I want to I want to read my fan mail because it is coming in in droves as you people are absorbing the 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 absolute corruption of this country, the hate, the absolute corruption, the the dictatorial nature of this country, the fascism that we have now have. You're gonna know. But I'm in a good mood because my girlfriend is so far away and she's going to send me a letter and I am so looking forward to seeing that letter because that's the only thing that makes my day. Okay. Oh. Please, Mr. Postman, look and see if there's a... Dear Marco, I ran off with your brother. Oh, my God. Well, maybe there's a better one in the second one. That wasn't exactly what I wanted to hear. But, you know, what are you going to do? Women. The second one is, um, the second one is, oh my God. I'm being, I am being fined by the IRS for $100,000. This is a good day for me. I can tell you that. Oh, well, we're going to, we're going to go on. I don't care. Let them go ahead and find me $100,000. They're just stealing money from me anyway. Taxes are nothing but theft. Okay, let's go on to the next chart. Okay, now we're going to go to the S&P small caps. Look at them. They've broken out. Another good sign. Dow Jones Transportation. This is probably one of the best signs of a market moving up. And this thing is just soaring. Um, the U.S. dollar, I don't, I can't explain this, but this thing is going up. And as long as the U.S. dollar is strong, the Fed can do things. Once that is their weapon, once they, once they can't do things with the dollar and interest rates, they're screwed because then it becomes less and less efficient. It's like a gun with no bolts. Five-year treasury bills are going up. They started to come down. Now they're going up. The yield curve I've talked about has been flattening. Flattening means that the lower, that the shorter durations, like five years, two years, are really high relative to the long durations, like 30, 30 year bonds. And we are seeing an incredibly fast move in that happening. And those tend to be precursors of a recession. So for all you, for all the people, all the media that's telling us, oh, this is just great. It is not. Look at the 10. The 10 hasn't even come up. The 10 was looking really good. And when we have inflation that Joe Biden even admits is out of control. Of course, he admits that today. He didn't admit it yesterday. Yesterday was transitory. Today it's out of control. But anyway... 10-year treasuries haven't even passed the five years. That means we have an inverted yield curve where the 10-year is lower, is uh, coming down faster than the five-year. Um, actually, it's not in, quite inverted, but it's moving in that direction. And here's the, here's the one I really like, the 30-year treasury bond. 
these these have come down 70 basis points in about six months. These barely are higher than the five year. The two year is at 50 basis points. You cannot banks banks make their money by lending short at lower rates and by um, and by uh, they, they lend long at longer rates and they collect at shorter rates and they get a spread. That's how banks make a lot of their money. Um, well, I'll tell you some of the other ways they make money, but that'll be another time. Um, the Treasury inflation and protected, um, uh, protected securities, these are, these are excellent. Look at that. This thing started to come down a little bit, and look at that just absolute zoom up. Tre inflation is here. It is not transitory. It is going to take a long time to wipe it out, and during that time, you are not going to have a fun time living. I'm going to give you some tips on how to on how to uh, hedge inflation um, in the upcoming shows so that you insulate yourself from that. Natural gas, look at that. That was going to go way up, and all of a sudden it came way down. And this this makes me wonder: is the are the Russians withholding supply because they're one of the biggest suppliers, or are we re are we heading into a recession, and we don't need as much? I don't know. We're going to start seeing that pretty soon because we are not far from a recession. We are not far from a recession. We still have another leg up in the market because people are still so so euphorically bullish, but that will come to an end, as all things do. The only constant in the market is change. Agriculture fund, well, here we go. This one broke out again. Food prices continue to go up, and, um, you know, unless we all want to get skinny, um, this isn't a very good sign. You know, one of the things that, um, you know, th there are so many different crops that are going up, right now in value and um, going up and they're getting more and more scarce all the time. So we showed you the agriculture fund. This is the, um, this is crude oil. This thing for the first time in five, in eight weeks, I think, or five, it has not gone up. This thing goes up every damn day and shale is no longer a competitor. Shale, something has happened to shale. They're not giving either out as many, many leases to shale fields or they um, or the shale has a very short life and it is running out so you know shale was good for a few years but we did have we were exporters of crude oil for the first time in 40 years and we produce the most in the world for the first time in 40 years as CRB commodities this just shows you all the basket of commodities look at that straight up I mean, how can you, how can you, how can you not look at this unless you're Joe Biden, of course? How can you not look at this and see that we are headed for tremendous inflation? One of the things about inflation that you need to know: it doesn't immediately hit. It it works its way through the system because there are intermediate goods, there are beginning goods, there are all kinds of goods along the way. And all these price increases are passed along the way. So it takes about a year before you're going to see the full effect of this. If it stops today, if this stops today, we have another year of inflation. Think about that. Wheat is, the, is probably one of the few crops that is actually going up. A lot of them have kind of stopped going up, and I, I haven't put them for a reason. I don't know why wheat is doing this, but wheat seems to be going up and you know fortunately us is a, a wheat a good wheat producer that will help us a little bit but not a lot the dow jones reit index the best hedge against inflation right here real estate will is not going to be made in more amounts there is only a fixed amount of land and there are an unfixed amount of dollars if you had to hedge yourself against inflation one way, I would do this. There are other ways like oil and gas. There are other ways to hedge yourself against inflation, like the tips that I showed you earlier, the Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. But, you know, you're going to you're going to need to hedge yourself because pretty soon you're not going to be able to afford anything. 
base metals for construction. Look at this. We were building like crazy because of all this anticipation of, you know, uh, infrastructure building. And they have just gone straight up, straight down. And this suggests a recession coming. And I don't think the recession is that far away. I think the recession is going to be June. It's going to be July. It's not July, June, July. I, I'm so bad with calendars. It's not funny. But um, it's going to be January or the first quarter of the year. And, you know, we are going to see, we're going to see some tougher times than we think we've seen. You think you've seen tough times? Just wait. Gold. Gold is going to be, I think, your safe haven. Gold has has had a long 5,500-year track record of being an inflation hedge. It's not perfect. You know, it, it has its little um, parabolic moves. But right now, it's in a, um, you know, descending wedge. And I, I've looked at a lot of the individual gold miners and silver miners, and I'm almost ready to start recommending them. And I will, within the next two shows, start recommending that you take a dip in those. These are the new Bitcoins. The Bitcoins are, are gone because there's 11,000 of them. Have you ever used a Bitcoin? I've said that the last three shows. I've never used a Bitcoin. I don't know how. I don't know where I'd use it. I don't know what the point is other than gambling. If I want to gamble, I go to Las Vegas. But I don't buy something that doesn't exist and that can be hacked away from me and taken from the U.S. government. Copper is another valuable building material and it went 800% in one year and so did lumber. Now all of these have come right down and um, you know it's, it's really going to be interesting whether the infrastructure bill requires all these metals and copper and and tin and lead and steel to build because it's a three trillion dollar bill. I have three trillion dollars just lying around but I'm not gonna pay for the government. They just waste money. Okay, so we're gonna that's copper miners. Now Bitcoin now we're gonna go to the cryptos and cryptos I know are very, very controversial and I'm gonna tell you what I know about cryptos. And you're gonna and a lot of people don't like to hear this because they think it's instant riches with no work. Bitcoin Cash did not, did you know, went down 75% and it's barely bounced. This is this company is has no management, but the person that claims to run the, the person that is sort of closest to management is an ex felon from California. Now, do you want to own that? Have you ever needed a Bitcoin Cash to, to buy anything? Does anybody accept Bitcoin Cash? I don't know. And so that's what I'm saying. That there's no utility to these things. Um, Ethereum, on, on the other hand, has broken to new highs. Ethereum does have a real company. They do have a real management. They do have utility. I don't know what you use Uther Uther um, Ethereum for because, again, as I said, I don't use cryptocurrencies. I don't know what they do. I've never had a need for one. No one's ever said you can only pay with this with cryptocurrencies. So people just gamble with them. But Ethereum it at least is a solid company with real people behind it. So that's why I put it there and it broke out to a new high. And this tells me that there is some interest remaining in cryptocurrencies that is that is still going to propel them higher. Ripple also broke out. It's a token. Um, it's basically a token. It's a real company, um, Ripple Labs in uh, Silicon Valley. And this one has, you know, th this one has some value. I don't exactly know how you use it. You use it as like a bus token. And I don't know why bus tokens become so valuable. Uh, but it is real. It is not like Bitcoin, a fraud. Um, Robinhood Markets came out not too long ago as sort of the broker dealer of the millenniums gen x gen y gen z and they're already under investigation this company i don't know if it's going to last 
because they have already violated so many SEC rules. And this is not where you want young kids throwing their money away. Litecoin is also broke out. And that's another reason why I think that uh, cryptos have another move up in. And um, Litecoin is uh, kind of a light Bitcoin, I guess, for lack of anything. But they sell, but you know, if you've actually gone to the Litecoin uh, website, all you see are uh, tchotchkes for sale. They, they just want to sell e-commerce. No one wants a Litecoin, you know, in exchange for groceries. Um, Overstock.com accepted Bitcoin all the way from 2013. And in all those almost 10 years, less than one half of 1% were, were transactions in Bitcoins. They don't have it. Now, why it, it seems to be a proxy, I don't know, but it broke out. And I would say that that is a positive sign that, that cryptos have another leg up. MicroStrategy, I also thought was, um, earlier I thought was kind of a dumb thing, but you know, Michael Saylor bought them below where they are. He's made a profit and these look like it could go. I don't know. These things turn on a dime. That's one of the reasons I don't recommend them. You could be up 20% one day, you could be down 40% the next day and bankrupt. So be careful about these things and they're very easily hacked. If you lose your password, you lose everything. There are not 22 million Bitcoins around anymore because at least a quarter of them have been lost, the passwords. Coinbase is probably the, the largest uh, you know, entity in transacting Bitcoin. It's, it, it first it went down, but now it's starting to turn up. And I, again, I will say that this is a positive sign for cryptos. I can't stand them. You know, I have a worldview where I can't stand cryptos, but on the other hand, I charts are charts say it all. I mean, they tell you, they tell you, you cannot ignore them and say, oh well, that has an error, blah blah blah. They tell you, they tell you in money, where money is flowing, that's where you want to go. Okay, now we're gonna go to the um, mega caps, Apple. Apple continues to go up. It's in a bear flag. Apple churns money like crazy. It, it, um, it buys stock at something like 100, 120 billion a year. And it is just an unbelievable uh, company in terms of turning out great products. Amazon slightly broke up. Um, it's a, you know, it's a retailer. It, it has almost everything, very good prices, but they are getting competition. And I don't know that that competition will not eventually take Amazon out. Facebook, oh, my favorite. You know, if there's one person I would love to give a big hug to, it's Mark Zuckerberg. Mark, how did you come up with the idea of sex trafficking little kids and women and doing it so slyly and with the Chinese. And how did you do it with WhatsApp? And how did you do it with Instagram and Facebook? You are the worst piece of human being there has ever been. And I will not be happy until you are at the Nuremberg trials or you are at the Hague and you are basically like Nazi soldiers being grilled because you have done more to hurt humanity than anybody I know today. Google, unbelievable. A monopoly keeps going up. It, it, it just, you know, one of the things about Google, they call it Alphabet because it has so many, so many companies, so many subsidiaries. So it's Alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They must own a hundred companies. I don't know if more, but they're all good. And the, the nice thing that Google has is friends in Washington, D.C. that you know, make it a little harder to compete with them. And there are companies that can compete with Google, I guarantee you. Um, NVIDIA is a crypto chip maker and a, um, you know, fast gaming chip maker. It is now the bellwether semiconductor company. If this thing keeps going up, there's no way the market's going down. 
this is a this is an absolute juggernaut. Netflix, same thing. Long, long uh, consolidation finally broke up, and when you see that long consolidation, you know that that square box, it's going to go up at least as high as that box. Okay, so you're going to see either a huge move in Netflix, because and and what I wonder is Netflix telling us that we're going to have another lockdown and we're going to be at home again, because that's what it tells me, because people are going to work now. But why would going to work now make it more profitable? It would only make it more profitable if there's going to be a lockdown. So, you know, this is just a guess on my part. But watch out. Walmart, these guys are smart. They're old guys, the Walton family. They're selling 200 out of 200 stores, vending machines, bitcoins. And they're charging an exorbitant commission because they're getting the last, the very last suckers to buy Bitcoin. The people that can't open an account, the people that can't get it anywhere, but you can put a quarter in a machine and you can have 0 0.000001 Bitcoin and become a filthy millionaire in, oh, maybe a million years. And Target, they've done great. Target deserves all the lot all the compliments in the world, they have absolutely done exactly what they needed to do to survive this incredibly ridiculous period that we're going through. And MasterCard, well, this is interesting. Credit cards are starting to have problems. And um, I will say this, credit cards are now becoming maxed out there is very little left that you can lend people and they don't have the income to repay the debt. As of, you know, just within the last year, the revolving credit debt of credit cards surpassed $1 trillion. Since the, since the flu, it tripled. The credit card balances tripled and that's because people weren't making any money. This is what you do when you want to destroy your population and you don't give two craps about them. You just want to get reelected. That's why we need to get these bums out of office because they will do this to us over and over and over and over and over until we're all living in the streets. Same with Visa. Visa broke down. Visa is very correlated to retail sales. Retail sales 70% of the market. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. If people cannot even use Visa, they don't have cash, they're not going to be able to buy much. And I'll tell you, we're going to have a crummy Christmas because everything is log jammed. It is bottlenecked. It is in some railroad car, some port somewhere, somewhere out in the ocean. And it is, we're going to have one of the weirdest holiday seasons you've ever seen. Black Friday will really be Black Friday. It's going to be dark Black Friday because, you know, so much is out. Um, FedEx, you know, here's another one. FedEx delivers things. They deliver all the things that we buy. So why is it, why aren't they doing well? You know, they're, they're, they're one of the biggest and they're not doing well at all. So FedEx is gonna have, FedEx has logistical problems of getting goods to people and they're gonna get them late. Uh, um, Halloween passed. Did you see any people wearing Halloween costumes? Um, no, they're after sales. And UPS, finally, this one, I don't understand. It's hit a double top, but it's starting to come down. It, it is a, just like FedEx, but it seems to have gained a market share over it at FedEx. I don't know which one will prevail, but whichever one prevails, FedEx or UPS, that's the direction we're going. So keep an eye on those graphs. Home Depot, look at that, another retailer that's done really well. People are buying early. They're buying early because they think they're going to be shortages. If you go into a department store or a grocery store and you see empty shelves, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Oh crap, I better buy some more of that because I'm going to run out and I'm going to need that. And I think that is what is helping the retailers right now that people are hoarding 
and they are basically buying too much because they are afraid that food is going to run out. The farms are not fully stocked. You have to have vaccines, masks, everything, and they are not producing the, the amount of food that they used to produce. Nordstrom's too. Nordstrom's was, wasn't doing too well. Looks like it broke out. Maybe it's going to do a little bit, but you know, Nordstrom's has not had a good year and Nordstrom's is also going to have a little bit, probably not the holiday season that they had hoped for. And CVS, CVS, there's, there's where you go, you get your jab. So if you want your fifth jab, your sixth jab, your seventh jab, you know, make Christ, make uh, Pfizer a lot of money, $50 billion or something like that. That's where you go. If you own Chrysler, if you own, I'm sorry, Pfizer, you, you might as well go to CVS and, uh, you know, at least, at least uh, they'll make money and you'll make money business off of them. And Costco, look at that. This is one of the reasons I think we are hoarding. Costco is a, is a big supply store of big, uh, of big amounts of food. And if you go to Costco, you want a lot of food to store. And Costco has been going up straight up. It's doubled in a year. Okay. And I think people are, it's doing so well because people want to have food on hand. Yeah. There's going to be nothing worse than a food shortage. And a food shortage is not, it is not out of the question. Triple M is going to benefit from the uh, infrastructure bill that's just about to be passed. Um, you know, it really hasn't done all that well. It, it went up earlier in the year. But you know what? A lot of these companies, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure hasn't even really been settled yet. And uh, Triple M is probably good of a situation as that. And it's a Dow component. American Airlines. Now, American Airlines, uh, I, I really don't. This one looks like it's actually almost breaking out. Almost. It shouldn't because there are so fewer flights around. The airline prices are going up, though. Triple. I have looked at airline prices, and they have tripled. They're not tripling because of the demand. They're tripling because of the inflation. And that is going to not be good for them. They also have to pay lease leases on all their planes. A lot of them are idle because they, people just don't want to get on planes, get a colonoscopy from the, from the stewardess at the TSA, and then have, have to wear one of those stupid masks and have people arguing with each other the whole time. I know I don't want to get on a plane. I, I just as soon fly over there if I could. There are some stocks that are worth buying, and they're cheap. Canopy Growth is one of them. It is a stock that makes cannabis, and they were bought 30% by Constellation Brands. It's one of the biggest companies there is in it. This has an unlimited market potential. And instead of fearing the reefer, like Bluish or Cult, I think you should take a look at these stocks, because these things have unlimited potential. Don't fear the reefer. Take a look at it. It might make you rich, all right? So I'm going to go on to the next one here, which is Kronos Group. Kronos Group is another one. They are, there's a lot of consolidation in the uh, cannabis industry, and they are going to make a lot of money, not only because people are depressed, because people don't have jobs, and because people just basically have been put it on the shelf. And I think that is going to be, that is going to increase the demand for these kinds of things. And they don't harm you. They are actually have so many uses, so many values. It amazes me that the United States has not federally made it a, um, you know, made it legal. Although, you know, Kamala Harris, well, you know, she likes it. She likes her, she likes to do it with uh, Tupac Shakur, even though he's not alive. Um, Finally, Aurora Cannabis is the, another one. This is a, an excellent looking chart. It just broke out. I, you know, I'm actually very tempted to buy some of this. I don't know that I want to recommend it quite yet um, because they do, they do tend to have wild swings. But you know what? It's, there are so many uses, medical uses, 
there are medical uses, and there are hemp uses, rope uses, all kinds of things. These things are going to have so much that is going to be valuable that you can use from this product. And it's a legal product. It will not. It, there's no ODs. It is not. It is not a drug. Some people call it a drug. It is not a drug. It, it was legalized by the, um, the uh, tobacco companies because they didn't want the competition. And finally, I'm going to show you one more thing. I just, just in case you miss it at the top, I want to show you just how much people hate politicians. And politicians are the bane of this world. We need to get rid of all of them. We need to have new politicians every term, one term politicians. Vote out the incumbents. If you vote out the incumbents and you pass and we pass a constitutional amendment that says they can't run again, well, tough shit. They've got to basically, um, they're going to have to learn how to do a regular job and pay regular taxes and not do everything in their favor. They run, they run 50 million and 100 million dollar campaigns for 175,000 jobs. 175,000 dollar jobs. You know why? Because they make it other ways. How can you make so much money when you're not paid, being paid that much money? They don't have to drive. They get their own housing. They get their own food. So of course they're not going to know about inflation. We need them out. We need people who are real people in office, and I and I hope that you are with me to vote out all the incumbents as soon as possible. Let's get them out of there. Let's make it. Let's make it so that we can never ever have a re-election again. And George Washington, our first president, was the first person to warn us that if we had a party system, this exactly was going to happen. So with that, I want to thank you for tuning in. I know it's a little long-winded today, but. Um, like and subscribe, and I'm telling you, vote out the vote out the incumbents. Life will be so much better.